Okay, here are your notes for geometry, section 4.4. We're going to take a look at cheat sheet 6, the SSS, shortest postulator theorem that you'll have. Cheat sheet 6, go ahead, take it out, get it ready. It's called the side, side, side postulate, but we can abbreviate it just SSS. What it says is, if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So basically, if I had these three sticks, these three sides of a triangle, and I gave them to student A and said, here, Take these three sides of, the tri of these three sticks and make a triangle out of them, end to end. If you start from one end, go to the other end. They would make this triangle. Then I went over to student B and said, hey, why don't you try it? You make a triangle out of these. And they could take these same three sticks, and no matter which way they organized them, even, unless it was like rotated in a different direction, it doesn't matter, the triangles are still gonna be the exact same size. Somebody can't make a different size triangle out of these three sticks. They could say, oh, I want this angle at the top to be obtuse. I'm gonna make it really big. So that way my triangle's different. Well, then this side doesn't fit. So you can't do that. You'd have to close that angle until it fits. Now that triangle's exactly the same size as the other triangle. So the good news in this is in the, uh, in the previous sections, the only way that we proved the triangle's congruent is if you had all three sides and all three angles. So you had to come up with six parts every time you wanted to prove something congruent. You'd be like, well, this is congruent, this is congruent, this is congruent, and so is this, and this, and this. So by the time you were done, you had six different parts of triangles just to say that they were congruent. Now we just are gonna prove, if you have three sides from one triangle to another triangle, they're congruent. Forget about the angles. The angles are gonna fall in place. They are gonna be congruent, but they're automatically gonna be congruent, so you don't have to list them. So we're gonna work on that with um, congruent statements, some things that you've seen before, and see if they're true or not. Decide whether the congruent statement is true. Explain your reasoning. So we're gonna take triangle QWS, make it congruent to triangle CPJ. Reminder, this is a congruent statement for triangles. You've gotta put the triangles and the letters have to be in the proper order. So we'll look at this diagram of triangle QWS and triangle CPJ. First check and make sure that all the sides are congruent to each other, the corresponding sides. We've got a single tick mark, a single, a double and a double, a triple and a triple. That's what you're checking first. Okay, we do have side, 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 but did they write this in the correct order? Is segment QW right here congruent to segment CP? Yes, they put those in the right order. Is segment QS congruent to segment CJ. Yes, those are first and third. They're writing them in the same order. And of course, is WS congruent to PJ, segment WS and segment PJ. They have it marked side, 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 and they also put the congruent statement in the correct order. So yes. Explain our reasoning. Here's the best part. You abbreviate it as SSS. Of course, if you write side, 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 it's probably going to get marked wrong with the technology that we have, not recognizing that that means the same thing. Go with this, SSS. Take a look at this next triangle. We have triangle TAZ congruent to triangle ZCT. And as we look at it, we have two, a pair of single tick marks, and we have a pair of double tick marks, but we don't have a pair of triple tick marks. So we gotta ask ourselves, is there a third side that's congruent? Is the third side of this triangle congruent to the third side of this triangle? Well, since they were put exactly right on top of each other, I'll get it back to where it was, we can say, yeah, this third side is congruent whether it's on this bottom triangle or on this top triangle. So when it says explain your reasoning, we're gonna have to put in here that segment TZ is congruent to segment TZ. And the reason for that is the reflexive property. Anything is congruent to itself. 
The reflexive property allows us to say that segment TZ is congruent to segment TZ because they're connected, they're right on top of each other. Now we have to check the congruence statement. Is triangle TAZ congruent to triangle ZCT? Double check and make sure that they're in order because the T is first here, but it's last here. But according to this triangle, that's correct. We want side CZ to be the same as side TA. TA, ZC, they wrote them both first. Then they went with CT and AZ. CT and AZ, they both came last. And then we proved that segment TZ is congruent to TZ, or ZT, you could go either way. It's the first and the last. So yes, that is also true. And again, it's by side, side, side. So you do have to put in that third pair of congruent sides, otherwise we only had two. So the reason is the reflexive property, and then the reason the triangles are congruent is side, side, side. Last one, let's try this one. We've got segment XU, no, XK. Segment XK is congruent to segment EU. It's not marked on here, but it is congruent. And you have segment XU congruent to segment EK. Okay, so if I separated these two out, we could also say, oops, I don't want them to be disconnected though. We could also say that segment XK is congruent to segment EU going this way. So we have two pair of congruent sides. Okay, those two pair of congruent sides, we would need a third side. Do we have a third side congruent to each other? Well, if we go back to where we started, yes, we do. Looks a little bit different than the other reflexive property, but it still exists. Segment UK is congruent to segment UK. And I don't care if you put UK and KU, that's, that's okay also, because segment UK and segment KU are the same. Reason for that is the reflexive property. If you haven't noticed, we use the reflexive property a lot. More than you probably thought you were going to, to say something's congruent to itself. Now let's check the congruence statement and see if that's true. They put side XK, side XK, they mark that the same as side EK. Is side XK the same as side EK? Oh, they did not. Yes, the triangles are congruent by side, 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 but not the way they wrote it. That is not true, the way they wrote it. So let's rewrite it in the correct order and get it the way it belongs. We can leave triangle XKU as is, but then we're gonna have to carefully write what goes with it. What side goes with XK? XK goes with side EU. XK goes with side EU. UK or KU goes with KU over here. So we know that if this is an order of XKU, this would have to be in the order of EUK with the congruent symbol and the triangles. And now we can say it is true by side, side, side. But theirs was false. So don't just automatically look at that and say like, oh yeah, I've got this by reflexive property, so my three, my three sides are congruent. You have to be careful of how the congruent statement is written. Okay, for this problem it says, which are the coordinates of the vertices of a triangle that's congruent to triangle PQR. So we have triangle PQR right here, and we wanna know is triangle ABC congruent or is triangle XYZ congruent? So what we have to know, because we're working with side, 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 we are going to measure the sides of each of these, this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle. Seems like a lot of work. I know what you're thinking already, ah, oh, distance formula, which distance formula isn't hard, it's just a little bit long. But we can shortcut the distance formula because when it's on a graph like this, you can just count as long as it goes straight across. One, two, three, four. Four spaces. One, two, three. Three spaces. We don't know the third side, so we can find that using the distance formula because it's on a diagonal. Let's find our point P, which is left one, two, three, four, five, and up one, two, three, four. 
our point r over here is at negative 1, 1. So if we're using the distance formula for the measure of segment PR, it's the square root of x2 minus x1, negative 5 minus negative 1 squared, plus 4 minus 1 squared. We end up with square root of 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. That's not so bad. We'll have to do it three times. So 3 this way, 4 this way, 5 this way. We want to find out over here, does triangle ABC have those same three sides or does triangle XYZ? So we'll start with triangle ABC. Notice they have the same X value right there, which means they both went left 1. This one went from 1 up to 5. From 1 up to 5. So that's technically four spaces. So AB is four, the measure of segment AB. We can do the same for the measure of segment BC. We're going, the Y values are the same, so it just went straight across from negative one to negative four. So that's going to be negative, or negative one to zero, one, two, three. No, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, three spaces. The only one we need to find is AC because those are both different. We're going to go with the square root of negative 1 minus negative 4 squared plus 1 minus 5 squared. Make that a plus and we end up with the square root of 25 which is 5. So. AB is 4, BC is 3, AC is 5. Yes, those are congruent triangles. If we needed to, we would do the same thing with X, Y, and Z, because maybe, maybe they both are. They might not be, but they might both be. Let's check it. We'll go from X to Y, because those both have the same X value, and we go from 7 to nine. Oh, that's only up two spaces. Don't even complete the problem. I already know that it's not congruent because one of the sides is not the same. So just go from there. All right. All right, different type of problem. We are given this information. As soon as you see the givens, mark it on the triangle. Segment PR is congruent to segment PQ. Mark it, single tick marks. Segment RS is congruent to segment QS. Mark it. Prove the two triangles are congruent. First, describe the step needed and the reason. We need this third side congruent. If you haven't caught on by now, the reflexive property is our friend. Segment PS is congruent to segment PS by the reflexive property. And segment, and then it says write the congruence statement and its reason. We have to be careful and watch our order. You can call the first one anything you want. I'm going to call the first triangle, triangle PRS. Don't forget your triangle symbols. So I went from P to R to S, which means our second triangle has to go from P to Q to S. Reason, side, side, side. It'll become one of your favorite reasons, nice and short and sweet. One more problem, and then the end of our notes. Given segment AB is congruent to segment ED, got it, it's already marked for you. Given segment AC is congruent to segment EC, got it, already marked for you. But the next reason is not a congruence. We need a third congruence. All it tells us is that Ray CF bisects segment BD. We have to prove the triangles are congruent. We're gonna to have to prove it by side, 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 because that's all we know. First, describe the step needed and the reason. Well, if we have a step that we need, we definitely need segment BC to be congruent to segment CD, or you could call it DC, it doesn't matter. We need those segments to be congruent, but we need a reason for them. We can't just say, oh, I think those are congruent. 
The key piece of information up here is the word bisects. It bisects. If you're thinking, or if you can recollect, that word bisect is somewhere in your cheat sheets. You go find it in cheat sheet three. If, remember it's if and only if, so you can go either way. If a ray is a bisector, then it divides an angle into two congruent angles. Well, guess what? We could also use it and apply it to segments. If a ray is a bisector, then it divides a segment into two congruent segments. Works for both. So we go back here and we say, I know that BC is congruent to segment DC because of the definition of bisector. And be careful, I know the word up here says bisects, but if we are going by our cheat sheets and we're going exactly word for word, we're gonna write out definition of bisector. The underlined bolded word is how you use your reason. Now that we have those congruent, we know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. And yes, they put it in the right order for us by side, side, side. All right, do your homework for this. Get a good grasp of side, 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 because there are more. If you saw cheat sheet six, we still have side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and HL left. Do well and get side, 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 a good grasp of it before we move on. So get after the homework, section 4.4.